Hi everybody, my name is Lauren and welcome to Plants and Tings. In today's video, we are talking about rescuing your sad plant. Specifically, your plant that's probably experienced transplant shock. First, I just want to say thank you to everybody who voted on the community post. I will be using that a little more here and there. I like using it to kind of get a gauge for you guys and what you're interested in. So you guys wanted to see the next step in this mini series. So thank you. That helps me know like we're going on the right path. So I appreciate you. So you tried it. You did everything everyone on YouTube said about how to transfer your plant from soil to semi hydro. Notice I said everyone and not me because I am not taking full responsibility for that. There's plenty of us out here on here talking about how to transfer your plant, but listen, it's happened to me too, and maybe you're experiencing a fail slash transplant shock. We're going to talk first about what the difference is. So if you see your plant and you have no roots, no node, node being that stem part where the petioles and the roots come off of where it has the bumps, if you don't have that or it's like rotted and black and mushy, if I have an example, I'll put it on the screen. I actually meant to bring something from my prop box because I'm sure something in there has rotted. I will throw it up on the screen. If it's looking like that, I'm sorry, but it's a fail and there's no bringing that back. And it happens to the best of us. It's happened to me and it probably will happen to me again because sometimes even when you do everything you're supposed to do, the plant still just says, I'm not with it. On the other hand, you might just have a sad looking plant. You're not sure what's going on, but you know it's not good. That's what we're gonna talk about because that you can come back from. So if you have a plant, I'll show on the screen my um, Anthurium propincum. It had the roots completely rotted away, but you can see the node was still intact. It still had healthy green nodes. It wasn't black and mushy, it was firm, and it had leaves. You could be in a situation where you have a node and no leaves. I talked about that in the last video. If you're in that situation, you're just throwing it into a prop box. Or you could pot it up, I'm not even gonna lie. You could take a node, a chunk, and pot it up as you, as you would if it had leaves, but me personally, I'ma just throw it in a chunk because throw it in a chunk. <laughs> throw it in a prop box because I'm not gonna wanna look at it with no leaves, but you can if you'd like. So first off, transplant shock is basically your plant, hi Mia. You know, I don't know if you guys can see Mia, but she's in my lap. Are you? If you come up in my lap, you're not gonna behave. I'm gonna give you one chance. Don't mess up my mic. Okay. Don't don't distract the people. Don't distract the people for what we're here for. She smells the pizza. I just ate pizza. That's why she's in my face like this. Mia. You have to stop. Anywho, okay. So transplant shock is basically your plant being stressed out and reacting to the change that it just doesn't, it just didn't see it coming. How about you, somebody just uproot your whole entire life and tell you you're moving cross country, something completely different you never know of, you're gonna be upset. So that's what's happening with your plant. It may drop all its leaves, it may drop some of its leaves, it may not do anything at all and just sit there stagnant and have no growth. So there's a couple of things you wanna look for in order to know that that's what's going on, but Generally speaking, the biggest thing that happens when you transplant a <laughs> She's sniffing my hand because I just ate pizza. <laughs> Mia, you're distracting us. Okay. She's laying down. All right. The biggest thing that happens when you transplant a plant from soil to semi-hydro is transplant shock. One major factor I wanted to expound on with transplant shock is root rot. You may experience this as well where your soil roots are rotting away while your plant is producing new semi-hydro or water roots. That is very common and does not mean that you will lose the plant entirely. Your plant does need to produce different a different type of roots. Previously it had soil roots which are, which are a bit different from water roots or semi-hydro roots. I have had some experiences where my soil roots do produce water roots off of those original soil, soil roots, but that is not always the case. Half of the time, my soil roots will completely rot away while the plant is at the same time producing new semi-hydro or water roots. Or I'll throw up on the screen my Summer's Glory where it is literally producing its like semi-hydro or water roots right off of the original roots. So in that transition where your roots are either 
dying off, mushing off, and the plant is quickly trying to produce new roots, that's when you'll start to experience leaf loss or yellowing leaves or the plant just acting really, really sad. So how fast you react to the transplant shock is going to determine if you can save the plant or if you kind of caught it too late and it's just a goner. Although I will say a lot of plants do kind of rectify itself and I'll show you guys my um, Billy Yetier as an example. I'm trying to reach the plant while me is in my lap. So this plant definitely went through transplant shock. It dropped a lower leaf that it was an older leaf, but it was completely healthy before then. It showed no signs that it was going to be dropping a leaf. It was growing vigorously before I transplanted it. So once I transplanted it and saw that the growth had completely stopped and it lost the lower leaf, my spidey senses, they was, they was up. And so I was like, something going on. So I decided to check on it. And when I did, I found that all the original roots had rotted, but had already started putting out new roots. Oh, I remember what happened. It was putting out roots at the top node here, but it was on the top of the substrate. So I wanted to put it deeper. So when I went to resituate it, I realized it, all the roots had rotted and it was putting out new roots. And so it was rectifying itself. It had to drop that leaf, but it was already putting out new roots and it was actually just fine. But like I said previously, in the last video, plants will try to save themselves. And with transplant shock, I don't believe that there's a surefire way to prevent it. You can do things to help um, lessen the chances of it happening. But like I said, there's a spectrum. So you always may have some mildness of um, a response when you transplant a, transplant a plant, <laughs> transplant a plant to semi-hydro. So, I wouldn't, I personally don't recommend any products for it because I haven't tried any of them. And I feel like the best way to deal with or prevent or slow the chances of transplant shock is just to start with a happy and healthy plant. Granted, sometimes we are transplanting plants because they're sad. I've done that. I've had allocations that were sad with meat and soil and I needed to transplant it to semi-hydro. At that point, there's nothing you could do or roll with the punches. So now that we've gotten all that out the way, the first step to actually saving or rescuing your plant from transplant shock is again, y'all gonna be annoyed, do nothing. Don't do anything just yet. Do nothing. And I'm stressing this like I did in a previous video because it's so important. It's so important to just observe, just see what your plant is doing first so that you can really know what to do. You know what I'm saying? And I will be honest, if you are a beginner coming from uh, soil or semi-hydro or beginner in any aspect, it might be a little bit difficult to um, process what you're observing. Like you might see, but you not, might not know what it means, you know? So a lot of times we'll Google like yellowing leaves brown tip leaves and it's going to give you a whole list of what it could possibly be and sometimes for all different problems it has the same symptom so it can be a little difficult the easiest way for me to determine if something is going on with my plants is by looking at the roots and by having a clear vessel you can look at the leaves you'd want to look for it dropping leaves that it wouldn't necessarily drop like older leaves so if it's dropping a top leaf or a leaf that was perfectly healthy before then maybe something is going on or if the leaves because things just like curling leaves or um, yellowing leaves don't always mean that the plant is gonna die from the transplant it just could be stressed from the transplant but you don't need to go uprooting it just because of that so in terms of examining the leaves to know if you're experiencing transplant shock you'd want to again look for like a rapid change or a rapid decline if you're seeing that you are getting normal leaf loss I wouldn't be too worried because nine times out of ten the plant is gonna rectify itself and you don't actually have to do anything the other thing you can and observe is the growth rate if it's dramatically slowed or completely stopped then that may tell you maybe let me investigate a little bit more like my like I mentioned the philodendron bilietiae it had completely stopped for weeks so let me backtrack a little bit and talk about timeline we might think that something's going on and it's only been two days <laughs> like and I've I've been there. I've been like this plant is not putting out a leaf. It's been a day, you know. Like 
The plant's timeline is different from our timeline. So before you go doing anything, you wanna definitely at least wait several weeks. And just to clarify about waiting, you only wanna wait if you don't see anything happening. If the plant is not dropping leaves, the roots are not rotting away, everything is just kind of at a standstill with the plant, then yes, you want to wait to allow the plant to go through its little stress moment and get itself together. If you see any of those signs of the dropping leaves, the rotting roots, you do want to take action, you do not want to wait and I can't give a specific number. I can throw out there like four to six, two to four, but it's different for every plant and it's different for where you live in the world, how what season your plant thinks it is, you know? So I, I would just say you wanna wait longer than the amount of time the plant would normally take to put out a leaf. So if you were normally only getting one leaf a month anyways, you probably wanna wait even longer than a month because the plant is stressed and it's trying to probably make Make new roots and then put out another leaf sometimes do though my plants do be putting out leaves when they ain't got no roots so i don't know plants are a mystery that's why i be saying there's no surefire way to do something because sometimes plants just do what they want to do but the point is to be patient with the timeline of the plant before you go start doing things because really maybe you haven't waited enough time for it to figure itself out so if you're not sure from the leaves or from the timeline then the last thing to check is the roots. That is gonna be your sure, fire, clear way to let you know something's going on. But I like to check those other things first because if you don't have to disturb the plant and disturb the roots unnecessarily, you'd wanna leave it be. So let's say we've determined there is some issue, but we don't know what the issue is. Like I mentioned previously, the roots is the best thing to start with first if you're actually thinking about doing something. Hopefully, if you have a clear container, you can see the roots and see what they're looking like. Example, I have my Syngonium macro, macrophyllum, <laughs> macrophyllum that I transplanted from soil to semi-hydro because I could not keep it moist in soil, so I put it here. And here are the roots, they look slightly questionable. They're not super bright, white, fuzzy roots. They're kind of brown, but they're not dark and mushy. So that's what you'd wanna see. Like the roots, they still, you can tell the roots are still kind of sort of firm. I'm using a monitor for the first time, guys, but it's a little delayed because I'm using my laptop. <laughs> and it's on airplane, it's not connected. Anyways, the point is that uh, you wanna look for the color of the roots. Does it look dark and mushy? Or does it look like this kind of tannish brown root matter color? Or is it green? Because green roots just means they're perfectly fine and you don't have to do anything. So that's one thing to look for with the roots. What do they look like? And the reason I was saying that sometimes just looking at the leaves is not giving you quite enough information is because this plant was dropping, I think this plant dropped like three or four leaves. These already look like they're yellowing compared to the leaf next to it. Like, so sometimes looking at the leaves is not always a surefire way. And especially as a beginner, I know for me, when you're new to plants, you just love plants, you just love what all the leaves look like, but you can't really tell the difference of what's a sad leaf versus a happy leaf. At least I couldn't. They all look kind of droopy sometimes, happy sometimes. So it's not, your eye is not as trained when you're a beginner, at least mine was. Let me speak for myself. My eye wasn't as trained as a beginner to be able to decipher what was a happy leaf, sad leaf. You know what I'm saying? So that's why you also want to check the roots in conjunction with what you're seeing on the plant in terms of the leaves. So if your leaves are looking semi-okay, you're not kind of sure, but you check the roots and they look fine, there's nothing to do, let the plant work itself out. And this plant has started to work itself out. It's putting out new leaf here, another one down in here. That one's kind of hard to see. The other one down in there. I thought there was three. Oh, there is. Okay, this is one plant, two plant. Okay, so the smallest one hasn't quite put anything out yet, but... The two larger ones are putting out new leaves, so even though I was dropping leaves left and right, there's nothing to do. It's working itself out. Every plant will have its own timeline as to how long it takes them to get itself together. So now let's say you did take a look at the roots and they are looking mushy, dark brown, even black, and then you know it's time to do something. So I'll throw it up on the screen here. On here, I have um, my same anterior proper cum. I'm never gonna be able to just say that without thinking about it. 
that plant it looked super mushy right through the thing looked super dark and i was like maybe something's going on and i believe i also said that um it wasn't doing anything it wasn't putting any news or new leaves and it was middle of the summer it's an anthurium and it would i would think be expected to put out some growth in some way and it was doing nothing so all three of those things combined told me that i needed to take action so at this point this is when you would unpot the plant examine the roots remove any old mushy roots just clean it up nicely remove those roots and then decide what substrate you're going to use to propagate a lot of the times i love to use chunky perlite that is my favorite thing to use now if it's a larger you know medium to large plant i'll use chunky perlite if it's a smaller plant like a little hoya i'll probably just put it in fluval either way you want to do something to give it an added boost in order to now produce new roots without it having to worry about the leaves it currently is holding on to so like i'll show you guys my hoya my hoya obovata splash oh it does feel better i was worried about this plant my goodness so i transferred it from a soil mix it was like a soil list mix to I, I did put it in pond but now it's in water it has some random pond at the bottom but it was in this container in water but the leaves were super like dehydrated you could see the veining really prominent it still is kind of looking a little dehydrated now but i'm telling you it, even though it's a little soft it feels better than what it felt before uh, so i put it in water because in my mind i was like it needs water asap and i didn't have fluval i'm lying if i had fluval i would have put it in fluval but i didn't have it so that's why it's in water but do whatever you feel comfortable with the point is that once i unpotted it i realized it was trying to put out new roots and it was just you know struggling so it is putting out some new roots these thick ones here are the new ones all these new roots is putting out so it's going to be just fine pretty soon but it's, it was taking a little bit so the leaves were super like flimsy it just wasn't taking up water and now they're getting slightly firm you see this one is nice and kind of rounded it's getting near it's coming back so that's what you basically want to do is nurse it to being able to put out roots quickly which is why i recommend if you don't have any leaves to just throw it in a prop box that's probably going to be the fastest thing you can do my favorite prop boxes are again perlite not necessarily chunky i use regular perlite or fluval most prop boxes for me just don't be hidden like it just don't it's for me it's super slow if it works for you, do whatever works for you in prop boxes when it comes to not having any leaves on your node. So now once this plant has sufficient roots, it, I would say these thin ones, I could cut these off because these are like the inner layer of these thicker ones. Um, and they're probably not doing anything for the plant, but it's not rotted, so I'm probably gonna leave it to be honest. But once you have sufficient roots, pop this bad boy up i was thinking about cutting it to make multiples to make it nice and full and pretty i think i'm still gonna do that and i probably should do that now while this is rooting um but the point is once you have sufficient roots then you can try again now i have <laughs> lost an epi a i've completely lost an epi and then i've almost lost it again i'll put it on the screen it's just i don't know it just didn't i don't know first of all i don't know why i tried it again in pond when the first time i lost the plant in pond and i think actually this plant that i'm showing if i'm showing it hopefully i'm pretty sure this was the second time i almost lost it it is yeah i potted it into pond almost lost it but i caught it fast enough because i was observing it and then i put it in water rerooted it completely from i cut it all the way down rerooted it and then almost i put it up into a pond again with a moss pole and i almost lost it again why i put it in pond again i don't know so don't do like me try something else so this time when it's ready i'm going to put it in leca and see if it's happier in semi-hydro so the last thing you want to consider when rescuing your plant from a transplant is your care if you've checked the leaves the roots and everything is you know copacetic and there's not really an issue there but you're not really wanting to just leave it and do nothing 
consider your care. You may need to make a minor adjustment to your care in order to make the plant thrive. So nine times out of 10, what I what has happened in my experience is that the plant just needed more light. Your plant can take way more light than we think it can. And grow light light is not like sunlight. So if you do have access to a nice big window or a window that brings you in a lot of light, whether it's morning light, afternoon light, whatever it is, you probably wanna put your transplant in a great place that's gonna get great light. And of course, if a grow light is your only option, definitely sit that bad boy right up under your grow light so it can take in all that artificial vitamin D to help give it some energy so it can produce some new roots for you. Speaking of light, I'm trying to beat this sun. The sun is about to come past this building and about it's going to blow this um, whole image out. So hopefully we can finish up before the sun comes past this building. But the point is that you can probably give your plant more light. So one thing to look out for if your plant, if you think your plant is getting too much light is if the leaves are burnt, obviously it's getting too much light. Or if it's bleached, it's a darker leaf, but it's looking more brighter then it's getting a lot of light. It's not necessarily damaging to the leaf, but you just might not like how it looks. And then the other thing is the leaves might actually physically start turning away from the light. And that's like the first thing I look for when I'm thinking about do I need to switch up the care for my plant? Because that will tell you 100%. If it is facing towards that sun, it is loving the light. It's not turning, you don't need to move it. But if it's turning away or it's burning, then maybe you want to move it there are other things to consider like your fertilizer or how often you're watering it but if you're transplanting a plant or if you ever prop the plant you know that it really needs to have sufficient water and stay moist in order for it to produce the new roots so watering is probably not the issue i can't speak for if nutrients might be your issue if you if you've like ruled out all other things then maybe you'd want to consider what are you using for your nutrients but I don't know I, I that's I could not speak on that because there's too many variables for that yes yeah, so. but ultimately the major key to rescuing your plant is being observant and being patient and it's like kind of the two hardest things because like I said especially if you're a beginner sometimes you may see something but you can't really interpret what to do with what you're seeing and then being patient I know I'm not patient I just be wanting to see new leaves right now <laughs> you know all the time I wanted to pop off but it just doesn't happen that way a lot of times with plants especially now we're coming into the fall winter season which I'm not gonna lie I do really love the hot fire heat but I don't mind the kind of comfortable heat that I'm feeling right now here down in Dallas it's just you could just get dressed so much nicer and get cute and do your hair and makeup and it's not gonna you know melt away by 12 noon so I'm enjoying it I really am and I'm looking forward to like not having to water my plants every three to four days so yeah I'm actually looking for the first time in my life I'm actually looking forward to like fall winter season so that is everything for this part in the mini series. If you have any questions, please comment down below. I will do my best to answer them. And if you're interested in seeing the first part of this mini series, if you haven't already seen it, I will link it up in the cards or I'll put it at the end of this video. And the next video is going to be about soil, my perfect soil mix.